to call this meeting of House Finance to Order. It is about 1.05 um, on Tuesday, November 7th at, um, uh, and here we are in Juneau after a long night. So President of Representative Ortiz, Representative Kawasaki, uh, Representative Wilson, down on the list here. Um, Representative uh, Co-Chair Foster, Representative Tilton, Representative Gren, Representative Guttenberg, Representative Thompson, uh, myself, Co-Chair Seaton. And before we start, remind everybody about their cell phones. And um, Vice Chair Guerra will be joining us shortly. I want to recognize that we have uh, Speaker Edgman in the audience with us. We have. Representative Sadler and Representative Talrico. And today we are going to um, go back looking at our um, at our other item on the call. And for background on that, we have um, the um, uh, director of the Office of Managing Budget, Pat Pitney. And if you'd go ahead and come forward. Uh, and so we're going to look at budget gap analysis and fund source balances so that we know where we are um, so we can see where we are going. And um, would you go ahead and put yourself on the record and proceed? For the record, my name is Pat Pitney. I'm the director for the Office of Management and Budget. And thank you for having me and, and hopefully you had some, some rest overnight. Um, we're just trying to... Um, kind of put the current status out as we know it. This is not the governor's budget. This is the known issues that we're facing uh, today. This is uh, just looking at what we had in terms of the budget last year and if we were going to fund that, that same level of services this year. So this in, in no way represents uh, the governor's budget that will be submitted in December. So this current year that we're working in is fiscal year 18, and the total state budget is 10.2 billion. Um, that includes federal funds, other funds, designated general funds, and general funds. And uh, we are uh, we are reporting that the dividend is part of the unrestricted general funds as we anticipate using the earnings reserve going forward as one of the primary sources for the unrestricted general funds. So of that 10.2 billion, half is unrestricted general funds. Of the unrestricted general funds, you can see the breakout of where those funding sources go. Education is the largest, second largest is permanent fund dividend, Medicaid, other health programs, then you see public safety and, and justice budget items, that statewide budget item is like debt service and the like. And then you can see much smaller, smaller budgets make it up. Of this unrestricted general funds, Half of it is sent directly out of the state treasury for payments either to communities, providers, oil companies, or individuals. So 50% of that unrestricted general funds goes out as payments uh, for things like Medicaid to providers on behalf of enrollees, uh, money to schools, Retirement payments on behalf of communities and schools, debt reimbursement to communities who've built schools, payments to individuals through senior benefits, public assistance, uh, foster care funding, et cetera. And then oil and gas tax credits, and of course a large one of permanent fund dividends. So that leaves only the other half of that unrestricted general fund to fund what people term government services. And, and uh, Director Pitney, can you just say the slide number as you go forward in case Thank people you. are following our audio and, and if they have the uh, have been able to download off Got the it. website, the, they'll make sure they coordinate. 
Thank you. So I'm now turned to page five. Uh, this is a, a rolled up version of the um, unrestricted general fund spending trend, fiscal year eight, 15 to fiscal year 18. Um, and if you can look at the total operating budget has gone down 23% in that time period, total budget down 28%. Uh, but I want to bring your attention to um, education in the university down 8%, health and safety budgets uh, down 9%, Medicaid and health formulas down 20%, other executive departments. So that's the governor's office, DNR, fishing game, transportation, down 43% in unrestricted general fund. Um, then uh, debt service and retirement and oil and gas tax credits down 50%, and legislature and courts down 11. For a total operating decrease of 23, then you add in the capital decrease of 78 for, for over this course of this administration, 28% decrease um, with help, significant help from the legislature. Um, people ask about the unrestricted, restricted general fund with the designated general fund. When you add in the designated general fund, the operating cut goes down to 16%, and the total budget reduction is 23% over that time period. Oftentimes people ask, well, did you just replace the bu budget? And either way you slice it, there's significant reductions. Uh, Representative Wilson has a question. Th thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, so how about federal funds, though? There's no way for us to know whether or not they increased or decreased um, during this time. So uh, n not from this particular slide, but that is certainly available information, and federal funds have increased during that time period. And, and Mr. Chairman? Uh, Representative Wilson, follow-up. Right, and, and maybe in a follow-up email, I tried to look at the other information that you, you gave us that had the designation numbers from 2015 to 2017. And like health and safety departments, I'm not exactly sure what all is included in those mm -hmm. numbers. Because even when I did education and university, my numbers mm -hmm. came out different than the numbers they have here. So there may be other things that you're including. Mm -hmm. But as I try to take these numbers with the charts that are in another attachment that you had, Mm -hmm. Mine came out, like in education university, was a $100 million difference. So I don't know whether or not there's other mm -hmm. numbers in there I'm not including. But if we could get maybe more details sent to the co-chair so we can match them all up, that would be helpful. Uh, certainly can do that. And we've, we've also included uh, those back, backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. And those numbers are the ones I was used to, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. And I did the education university, and my numbers just didn't come out the same way. So there may be maybe debt service or other things that are included in there that I just don't know because it's generalized. Thank you. And, uh, thank you, Representative Wilson, and um, the director will follow up, uh, yep. and so we can distribute that to the whole committee yep. instead of just. Right, that's what I asked through, through you, the co-chair. Thank you. And before you go forward, I wanted to recognize, recognize we've also been joined by Representative uh, Stutes and Representative Knopp. Thank you. So moving on to page seven, uh, this is kind of reconciling what legislative finance provided earlier during the special session and what OMB views are known increases. Uh, so at the top of the list um, is uh, Medicaid. And we, uh, we are expecting in the range of 75 million uh, in and additional payments based on where we were in fiscal year 17, where we closed out fiscal year 17. Legislative finance had a figure of 32 million, and when we were closing out uh, the fiscal year 18 budget, or when we proposed our fiscal year 18 budget, we communicated we thought we were low by about $32 million. Uh, it turns out it's going to be closer to $75 million for low for fiscal year 18. The, uh, the next item down, the marine highway system, uh, there was uh, ledge finance com communicated a $40 million reduction. That was a supplemental put in to the marine highway fund um, 
from prior year funds and then a larger draw of the marine highway funds, there was also another four million extra draw. So our, our figure there is 44 million uh, to just, just to do a status quo service level on marine highway. Fire suppression, um, we did not put this in our, our forecast, but 15 million is not an unreasonable uh, expectation. I would say, I would, I would tend to say it's gonna be closer to seven and a half, given the balance that they had from last year. Salary and benefits, we don't feel it's gonna be 15 million, but we don't have exact figures yet. Um, we do not anticipate a increase for the employer contribution for Alaska Care. There are a couple union contracts that require increase to health employer health benefits, uh, but I would say that that's much much lower than 15, uh, but uh, I would say in, in the range of five, but th it's not a known increase at this point. And uh, Director Pitney, the, um, you said you are not anticipating anything for Alaska Care. Um, later in the week we'll get something else from the health authority, but I believe the Foster study said that the average escalation was 7.5% uh, over the last 10 years. Um, so is this <coughs> saying that you're anticipating zero health care cost escalation uh, in the coming year? We do not anticipate an increase to the, um, the Alaska Care employer benefits, so the uh, 1555. Which is, in, which is the employer contribution uh, that exists today. We expect that to, to extend through 19. There are, will be increases in the employee um, contribution to the premium. And we are, we are seeing, um, we are seeing improved performance of our steerage uh, there were several uh, initiatives to help reduce our employer health care or employee health care costs, and many of those are beginning to bend the curve the, the way we had hoped that they did. And then, but there will be an increase in employee contributions. Uh, fine. And when we later in the week talk about health care costs as a driver in our mm -hmm. state budget. Um, we might ask you to come back and just so that we can coordinate those two different messages if, if, they're, if the increase in cost is going down, mm -hmm. you know, where is it getting paid or is it less service or is, you know, what that mm -hmm. is. So at that time, but I just want right. to let you know that we'd like you to come back. And, yeah. so and, and these, are, these are very, um, these are very short term cost changes, so this isn't looking forward. And I, I do agree with Mark Foster's 7% for employee health care increases over the last 10 years, and I think Medicaid over that same time period is uh, just short of five over that last 10, 10 years on the state funding side. If you include both, you're back up to that seven. Thank you. Uh, Representative Guerra, and I did want to recognize that Representative Guerra did join us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Pat, uh, 